Hello there everyone and welcome part 2 on my little mini series on my channel where I'll talk you through the RAF application process and give you an insight in my personal experiences as well as some tips and tricks to help you with your stage of the application process. So, part 2, second stage, the interview. So, the interview was probably one of the bits I dreaded the most because I was about 16 when I did it and I wasn't very confident and I was quite worried and I was just like Oh god, the interview's coming. So, that was my first day of job interview, so obviously i had never done such a thing before and I was scared. So, I'll tell you a bit about what happened with me and then I'll give you some tips and tricks and also just a bit of a walkthrough for what the interview will be like. So, first of all, for the interview, I turned up, dressed smartly, suit, jacket, the whole works. I had my little folder with me and I just waited in the waiting room so I was quite anxious but I had revised my absolute socks off so I was just tired and anxious and I was just sitting there in the waiting room stiff stiffly there was me and one other guy who was going for another ground trade and we were just waiting and I was at about 15 minutes wait and then my recruiter came and got me so you came into a little interview room and this is where my uh, preparation went in place so First thing you want to do when you go to the interview is give off the right impression. So already you've come smartly dressed, you've shaved, uh, you've kept your hair well, you've tied your hair in a bun, you know, just th things to show that you are looking professional. And uh, next thing you do obviously is you shake your, in your uh, recruiter's hand. So remember give a nice firm handshake, shows you're confident and shows you're ready to go for this interview and finally when you are asked to sit down you should sit down straight and firmly so the way I sat down was like this so it's, it's like the position of attention in the armed forces and it just shows that you are ready to take in information and you're smart or you can even sit like this but just don't fidget around because it can show that you maybe are a bit nervous and they will understand you're a bit nervous but too much of a twitch may you know it may come off to them and it may think oh so, uh, preparation. How did I prepare for the interview? So, first thing I did was I looked online and I looked at a blog, particularly from Ryan, which I'll be linking again in the description, and it just get brushed off a few things, so I went on the internet and started researching some key things. So, uh, the, the most of the common questions I'll be listing in the video, so the first few questions you'll get is, for example, why did you want to join the RAF? Why did you not want to join the Army or the Navy? And uh, you have to remember for this question, you don't want to, like, for example, slag off the other services, which means you don't want to, for example, shed them in a bad light because they all do their part for the UK security. You just want to give them the, your honest opinion and say, I want to join the Air Force or I chose to join the Air Force because of X, Y, Z reason. And the uh, next qu question you'll probably get is NATO. So you have to learn a bit about the history of NATO, which shouldn't be too hard, just, uh, just the important facts, like when it was founded, what it was founded for. So that would have been to protect the North Atlantic from communism, for example, because at the time it was founded during the Cold War, why NATO is still uh, like relevant today and what it's doing, and what NATO stands for. So NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or OTAN in French, which uh, is the secondary language that all NATO countries use when they're conferencing. Now, they'll usually ask, ask you to rattle off a list of free RAF bases at home and overseas. So, at home you can have RAF Bryce Norton, RAF Holton, where you'll be doing your basic training, and then, for example, RAF Spade Allen, where they do uh, civilian gas explosion tests. And then you'll be asked free for free bases overseas. So personally, the best ones I'd say are RAF Gibraltar, RAF um, Ascension Island, and finally uh, RAF Akateri, which is in Cyprus. And that should give you a strong base as long as you can also describe what the bases do and uh, what they're there for. Now. Uh, you, the most common question you'll also get is, why did you want to join the RAF? This is pretty self-explanatory. It's no good turning up to an interview and going, oh yes, I'm going to join the RAF, but you have to have a reason. Why did you join the, want to join the RAF? What inspired you to join the f service? So that's totally personal and that's up to you. 
and just uh, obviously tell them why. Now, you do get some very interesting questions as well and some questions that do require thought and you have to be quite mature about like, would you be willing to take another person's life because you are joining the armed forces and there is always that possibility that were you to be uh, on, a, on an active combat zone you may have to use deadly force and possibly take someone's life to save your own or save your friends. So you have to be quite mature about these questions and answer honestly. And uh, then you may also be asked about your trade. So for example for me, uh, I'm going for cyberspace communications and uh, they'll usually ask you what your trade is about, uh, what how long your training is, what you'll be learning in your training, so a few things such as like how it works servers and cyber security and stuff like that and uh, also where you might be posted for your phase two afterwards or where you'll be training for your phase two which is when you do trade training then you'll get some yes and no questions such as uh, your criminal record if you have one yes no if yes obviously elaborate and you should have had uh, a form given to you by the RAF to fill out any criminal records and then obviously uh, understanding the RAF's drug policy which is zero tolerance so no illegal substances at all and then uh, you'll also have some paperwork to bring in so you'll be given the relevant paperwork such as uh, RAF terms of service uh, the rehabilitation of offenders act and stuff such as that so it's uh, it'll only be about five six sheets you have to quickly sign and then give to your recruiter and that's just like the, just some formal paperwork that they'll get squared away straight away and then now you yeah, have a few tips for preparing for the interviews first of all I recommend doing a lot of mock interviews get a family member or a friend just uh, write a list of the questions uh, like the ones I've put down in this video which um, I'll probably put down in the description and then just uh, ask them to go through it and then uh, rate you so rate your confidence rate your speed and just rate overall how you answered it were you confident were you not confident and then uh, do your research this is very important so for your trade and for the RAF as a whole I recommend the RAF's own website however for the history of the RAF I do recommend going on websites such as Wikipedia or any other independent uh, history websites because they're usually quite good and they're quite accurate so I'd say Wikipedia for the history of the RAF and you have to learn only a few key things such as when the RAF was formed which was April 1st 1918 and some key dates such as the Battle of Britain because that's when the uh, that's the RAF's probably the most famous moment the RAF's ever had in their history uh, as well as that just um, lists some aircraft so some aircraft from every, from every period so like World War Two, Cold War maybe 80s 90s and present day just to uh, just show that you've really done your homework and then finally uh, you have to learn about your basic training this is very very important so let's say for your phase one you want to learn about all three phases and then the smaller denominations so for example the first three weeks will be your the hardest part because you'll be mainly focusing on fitness and uh, like uh, learning about the RAF and uh, you'll also be doing a six day adventure training course so you go up to Wales and you'll have all your adventure training kit packed and it'll be a six day expedition like in Duke of Edinburgh for example and you're gonna have to navigate your way across and work as a team and uh, you've also got activities like uh, caving which is like going through tight spaces in the cave and that's to test your confidence test your teamwork skills and test your ability to work under pressure and uh, this, this just shows to your recruiter that you know what you're talking about and they'll be quite impressed if you know every minute detail of basic training and you've also got phase two, the phase uh, second phase of the training, which will be force protection, which is when you get issued a green uniform, so like the ones the army wears, and you'll be doing work with the RAF regiment, so you'll be learning how to fire a weapon, weapon handling, uh, troop tactics, um, movement in groups, and then just stuff like uh, how to uh, w work as a team, as a squad, under fire, and then you'll have a massive exercise called Exercise Blue Warrior, which is like a, a small war game where all RAF recruits take part and it's basically they have to f uh, fight their way through some strategic objectives and this lasts about a few days and then finally you have the graduation phase so the graduation phase is 
where stuff gets to get gets a bit more easier. Uh, during graduation, you do mostly classroom work, so you learn about RAF, you study your drill, and you get ready for that day when you go on the graduation square and you sit, you parade there in front of your parents and family, and you are proud because you've got here and you're going to become an airman. So you'll be uh, tailored and measured for your uh, official uh, uniform, so your blue uniform, which um, you see RA the RAF um, uh, personnel walking around with. And uh, all you have to do then is just prepare yourself, prepare your drill, because it's it's your it's your day. Graduation is your day. Your your instructors will be proud of you. Your family will be proud of you, and you'll be proud of yourself. And uh, yeah, so just remember that that those, that's probably one of the most important things you have to memorize. So this concludes the video. If you guys have any questions or any queries, just uh, put them down in the comment section below, and I'll be I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as possible. But just do remember, this interview is not made to catch you out. This interview is just made to test you and to see how much you want to be in the RAF. Because there's hundreds of other people who are applying and they want to know why should they pick you. Just like any other job, they want the best. 